All right, guys, here we go. It is part 36 of a comprehensive Christian Christery. Quick, quick history, CWC. Ha <laughs> ha so funny. All right, guys, let's get this going. In a second. What, what made, made him this way? way? What is the attraction? What is the attraction? Oh, I got it. Okay. What, what, what keeps it? us fascinated? Dude, how do I forget the first three lines every time? I'm, I'm never going to get it. It's like I'm listening to a song that I could just, I, I just don't know. I don't know. I'm a failure. I'm a failure. This is the story of Chris Chan. Whoa, extreme mode. On August 16th, 2011, Christian uploaded a YouTube video in which he demonstrates how he puts on makeup. Now it's time for makeup. Hey, Christian created makeup tutorials. Sorry, guys. He's created everything. He's literally created everything. I like to start by putting on some of the old foundation. I, I go with my own skin tone, which was recommended to me by the person, uh, the woman who served me over at the uh, makeup. If only you could actually get a woman to serve you, Chris. Shame. Known as Sephora. Hey, Morphe's better, okay? Fuck Sephora. Pardon me while I powder my nose. Definitely kills the shine. And you don't want a reflective nose. Like some mascara. I really like to focus on the upper eyelashes because the lower ones are more difficult to do, really, recently. And then I like to uh, apply the old eyeshadow. But first, I gotta apply some primer onto the up onto my eyelids. We're really, we're really just watching this whole thing, huh? And uh, optionally, you can use eyeliner. Well, obviously, I should done that before I apply eyeshadow. Uh, it goes on the uh, edge of the eyelid. That's where it's concentrated at. And lastly, I'd like to apply some, apply some lipstick. Oh, it's just a no-brainer. And then to give me a little shine, I uh, just apply some lip gloss. Hmm. And that's a simple, and that's pretty much a basic way on the, of applying makeup. Okay. Tell him uh, Kaka sent ya. This was quickly followed by a video in which he calls out the troll Tell him Kaka sent you? Like Thaddeus, after he had been falsely told by supposed tomboys and tom girls with tech savvy friends that the man behind that persona was in fact Ahuvia Harrell, a transgender in mid transition at the time, who, like Chris, was labeled by online communities as a lol cow, or a person who often executed laughable antics in public and online, and in turn was. Oh, that's a lol cow. You know, I never knew what a lol, a lol cow, a lol cow. All right, I can't even get the word the right now. A lol cow? Okay. All right. Mocked and ridiculed. I felt it was appropriate to dress in my feminine attire, as, I, as you can see fit. Because I am definitely calling out one Jack Thaddeus, and we happen to share similar common interests, a few of which. We both accept the adjective of being called trannies, except uh, for him, he's, uh, he's just going through a whole the whole gender changing operation. Yeah. Lopping off his dick and putting on the old and getting it tucked in. Chopping off his dick and getting the old getting it tucked in. Couldn't have said it better myself, Chris. Thank you. Just so you guys know, they'll usually surgically like basically push it in. You know? Like um I don't know, here, uh, I don't know if I have anything I could Okay, here you go. So like basically the way it works, I'll show you here. Uh, I can I have a good way to show you that how this works. Um, is with this Among Us here that I have. I'll show you right now. Okay. So if you look, if you look closely at this Among Us, um, all right, I'll put myself on full. The Among Us has all the balls out, and when you do the surgery, the basically what they do is they push it in, right? So they push the ball in. This is how they do trans surgery. There's a couple of knives involved, but I don't know why, because this is very easy. You just kind of push it into itself. 
and then you press the Among Us into the thing. You see what I'm saying? So like, if you can see the difference between the the ones that are pushed in, that's how it works. So that's how they make a vagina for you. So I'm hopefully that was very educational for you guys. Um, hopefully that was very educational for you guys. I am not. I would never. I would never do that. I would never do that. Never have a sex change operation. I'm Same. proud to be a male, and I'm even more proud to be a Tom girl. Nice. And we both are into femdom, which is uh, female domination. Okay. Oh yeah, I'd like to get oh, by, yeah. by, by my woman. Wow, incredible. Mm. Yes. In his case of him uh, having his operations and going through it, I feel that he would definitely not be considered any at all a woman, a woman whatsoever. Okay. He's only fashionably looks like a woman with the parts and whatnot, except he does not have, except he would not have a uterus. And he would have no reproductive organs. Right, I mean, right. I want to have children someday. Obviously, he don't. And uh, also, my associate that gave me the information on him, he pretty much uh, he pretty much just pointed out calling him a tom girl. But you know what? He's not a tom girl at all. He's okay. just a full blown gay. Okay, <laughs> a full blown gay. Incredible. Everybody, everybody who hates, guys. everybody who is a who is a homophobe? Go ahead and call mine. Call Ahuvia. I got dang homo. Homo. It sounds Ahuvia mean. Homo. It sounds mean, Chris. <laughs> huh? Yeah. Yeah. Incredible. I want Mr. Ha Ahuvia to make the public apologies for all the things he have done. Uh, he has done against me. Shoot, I forgot to ram down. But he knows what he did, among which uh, okay. he has uh, pestered me and uh, on the phone and uh, blackmailed me to do a few things. Okay. Anyway, 25-year-old Hahuvia, Omo. Oh. Pretty much it. Oh, sounds like we it. We do yeah. agree on being cross-dressers. He then shows a small portion of a photo of Ahuvia's face. Yeah. Um. Anyway, he just does a he just does a terrible job in kind of in quote unquote cross dressing because I mean look at that stubble on his face. And then look at me all over. I take the time to shave myself. Well Chris you have nothing but time. But I would say waxing is probably the better way to to do that. Uh honestly. Because like when you wax it doesn't grow. I think when you shave your face it grows or shave your body, it grows back faster, right? That's true. I think I'm right about that, right? Smooth. Gross. So yeah, uh, who be ya? Make your apology video. Leave the internet. Leave me, my family, and my friends at peace. Okay. You Fair. have till the 10th of September of this year to upload your video of apology for all the wrongs you have done to me, which I will list in the description a little later. Fair. Good day. Four days later, he made a video directed at the troll known as Thorg, in which he raps about wristwatches, possibly making fun of his supposed obsession. Is there something dedicated to Master Thorg? Wrist, wrist, the wrist, 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 the wrist, 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 on August 23rd. I mean, at that at that point, like, what else can you do but to permanently retire from the internet? You know, like, do you feel like you you can't, you really cannot, like, out, you can't, like, you really can't live that down. You know. Chris recorded another video targeting Jack Thaddeus. I have heard that I have not seen any response from Mr. Jack Thaddeus, okay. as also is known as Ahuvia. So therefore, I will reveal a little bit more information about him, starting with another portion of the photograph. He was okay. definitely responsible for hacking my, hacking the network accounts. Probably had a hand in that blackout a few months ago. And uh, he blackmailed me into humping my console. Oh, I lose here. And uh, oh, pay, he, he said just be disgusting yeah, ads dude. on the Wikipedia. Not. As well as other trolling schemes within the past couple of years. Oh, yes. He is a communist! And we do not like communists! 
within this country. Very base, Chris. We are Republican, Democrat, or neutral. Okay. And I am neutral, so I can go either way. Democratic, Republican, but okay. Way. But I do not exactly care much for communism. We do not like to stand under one ruler. It is very unruly and stupid. I will give a high oak. High oak. Right in the purest face. Do, 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 do. What? He's going to give a high... Uh, what is he saying? Is he saying that he's a for or against the behavior? I'm very confused now. And he's definitely never going to be a female, truly, in that sense, in female dominance. He has to get a real woman to come in in order to do that. Jesus Christ. He still lives in Pennsylvania. Still homo. 25 years old. <laughs> it's just funny because, like, my first thought is, wait, he's, so he's gay because he lives in Pennsylvania? Like, that makes sense to me because Pennsylvania is gay. But then I realize he's just being uh, homophobic, so. Ah, who we are! The video was soon removed from YouTube for hate speech. No in kidding. response, Ahuvia Harrell himself made a video addressing Chris's remarks about him. It feels that looks very. I thought it could have been Chris Chan. Just saying, okay? It looks a little bit like him. I'm not trying to be a weirdo or like. Or, or, or a suspicious character from Among Us or anything. But. You know, I'm happy. I'm happy to be Olivia Harrell. You, however, you're not happy being yourself. You can't be yourself. Wow, got him. You keep being locked into this idea that, you know, it's the straight male female binary way you have to live, oh, or it's no revolution. way at all. As uh, someone who's a male to female transgender and who is pansexual, this means, Chris, I love everyone regardless of their gender identity. I love everyone. That's something you are incapable of doing. You, because you have shown the world you are incapable of tolerating these differences. Wow. Based. His next calling out video was directed at the troll behind the Julie and Blue Spike personas, wrongly believing that they were portrayed by gaming lol cow David Harlow, also known as Ness Helper. The uh, person who posed to pretended to be an adult woman, but yet was a uh, little little brats. Uh, he was also known as his alias Max and Blue Spike, but his real name is David, and he lives in California. Okay. I don't know as much as his age, but he's at least thirteen years old. And yeah. I feel like Chris, if you don't think if you don't know what age they are, um, you probably just should not care. You probably should just moved on. You know. Guess what? He is confirmed to have Asperger's. And I don't care much for Aspergians. And I do not Why is Chris so fucking unhinged? Aspergians? What the fuck? I not care to be associated with them. And I do not accept the scientific fact that autism is linked to Asperger's at any time. And of course he was responsible for that chili fiasco, making me drive all the way to Cleveland, Ohio. And coming up, one of the ending up the second medal, and and he likes big rooms. Big rooms? What does and that mean? And he has no job. Chris, neither do you. Come on. And he is also a gamer. Based. Here is a close-up featured from his photograph. Look at his fucking feet, or at least a gap between his feet. That's a big gap. Look at how big that gap is. Okay. Huh? But definitely a gap. And, Mr. David, you have until September 15th to come up with the apology video. And leave me and my family and my friends at peace. Oh, and also in your apology video, tell everyone to stop making phone calls to me. It says, Julie! Julie! And get rid of... And make sure that nobody ever calls me Ian Brandon Everson ever again, because that's just not my name. What is happening here? You have until September 15th. So fucking unhinged. Julian! This video too was removed for hate speech. No the kidding. final video of the day was dedicated to an unknown person who gifted him a laptop. And now at this moment, I would like to express a note of gratitude to a fan from the state of NC. 
for sending me his or her old laptop computer. Okay. Second hand, but it works very well. I had it checked. And it contains no viruses. But still, I upgraded it. And it is better. It is like brand new. So thank you very much, fan from North Carolina, for sending me the laptop. And okay. if anybody else wishes to contribute towards the execution of trolls and cyber bullies so that nobody else will have to be victim, you may feel free to you may feel free to contribute in okay. any way that you see fit. Generously and pleasantly. Thank you very much. On August twenty eighth. Quickie user Dinglebear leaked an unreleased video from Chris by the YouTube account Quickville Productions. Just so in the stupid. video, Christian plays the metal version of the theme song of the video game The Elder Scrolls V Skyrim by S-Beast on Guitar Hero and acts victorious, possibly over the allegation that Thorg had quit the internet. How Dinglebear acquired the video is uncertain. This is so ridiculous. I hate this. Ooh, really rocking it. Not a bad song. Think about it. Okay. Bro, I, I, I fucking can't. I, I can't. This is insane. This one is just insane. Like, this episode, like, Chris is gone... From a person to a, not a person anymore. Like he's just fucking insane now. This is this is just fucking ridiculous. Oh my god. The next day, Dinglebear released another video from Chris. This time, a response to Ahovia Harrell's response to his video. First off, I, you know, I am heterosexual. I am straight. That's just the way I am. It's not okay. a have-to situation. I never seen it. I've rarely seen it that way. I have at one point, but guess what? I've seen the other viewpoints, and they did not. Treat, and they did not fear to me so, so much. They gross me, they mostly grossly at mouth. So therefore, that is what I am, and I am happy to stay that way, and I want to continue to be heterosexual. I am happy with myself there. Oh, well, that's good, Chris. And I will admit that with, with other people, there are differences that I feel most uncomfortable about and around, such as, yes, gays, well, gay men, anyway. I like lesbians. <laughs> he likes lesbians because he finds them attractive, probably. Lesbians. Smokers, definitely the smokers. Can anybody tell me yeah. why smoking isn't stupid? I love how just to Chris, smoking and being gay is stupid. It's just like bad, equally as bad because he he finds them gross. So that makes them equally as bad. <laughs> it's just so fucking stupid. I don't think so. But that does not define me as an uncaring and cold-hearted person. I have empathy. I see. I can put myself in other people's shoes. And see how they would feel if I had if I uh, my responses into whatever situations. And yet you may, and while you may or may not have empathy as well, Ahuvia, I feel you to still be a typical non-understanding pig. I would travel outside of the state if or, or wherever if I could, but my parents are both old. My father is ill. He's sickly. Huh? He has feet bloatings. And he has bloatings. ailments that doctors are unable to determine. No. And at this point, he's now certified as a forced shut-in. He cannot get out so much because wow. he feels so ill and sickly on his feet. Tragic. And I do get out of my house. I go out here and there and everywhere, so don't tell me that I don't get out. I'm free of the bird, and this bird, Pete, this bird you cannot change. Okay. That's what I just learned from Leonard Skynerd, and I like that song. And Leonard Skynerd? What is that, like, from the Terminator? Skynet? Listen, I want you to listen to me here. I am all for equality, but there is a limit. I do not want to... <laughs> I'm all for equality, but there's a limit. What's the limit, Chris? Gay men existing? ...be forced or intimidated into or bullied into lifestyles that I just not am of. 
or feel comfortable around. So can we just like establish that Chris is open about how he thinks that gay men are disgusting? Okay. And that, but he's not going to like, whatever, not going to be bullied or blah, 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 blah. This is the same rhetoric from like every other, like, I like, listen, it's fine if you're not like a huge fan of gay people, whatever, but like, it's always this rhetoric. Like, yeah, whatever. I just don't want to be forced into it. Like, nobody's going to fucking force you. It's like, holy shit. But I'm still going to feel most uncomfortable around homosexual dudes, regardless. And just most other males in general. Why? Hell. I probably won't even have a bachelor party because I don't know so many males. I'll probably be having a bachelor party. Like, why, why, though? Like, what do you think they're going to try to fuck you? Because a lot of men are like, I'm afraid gay people are going to try to rape me, Like, which they're stupid for you thinking that. But, Chris, no offense. Even if gay people did that, which they don't, I don't think that you would be a target. So I don't think you'd have to really worry too much about it. Just saying. Mostly constituted with those within my congregation who I'm only acquainted with, a, with like one or two of. No, I would even appreciate having a bachelor party where I had all my gal pals come and hold it for me. I'd rather have a bachelor party with, where it was... Shoot, I'm trying to think of a word, you know. Um, well, anyway, with my, anyway, with mostly women. Because I feel more comfortable r around women. What? Platonic, that's the word I would use. The party would be platonic. So I would, so I would say, good luck being a fake woman because you'll never be able to oh achieve God. true fandom. And you'll always be a dang homosexual male because you were born that way. You're going to stay that way pretty much, oh even if you're going to have your dick either chopped off or tucked in. Oh, my God. This People is are so still going to look at you up. so ill. Oh, my the majority God. Of this country. That part's true, but anyway, it shouldn't be that now. way. Damn homo. Oh, my God. The following God. day. Dingle Bear leaked one last video, in which Chris reveals what he believes to be Alec Benson Leary's true identity. Christopher Paul Whitney, better known as morbidly obese YouTuber, Fat Man, who made videos of himself eating copious amounts of unhealthy foods while shirtless. The original Nicholas Acato, I have to say Nick Nicholas Acato, because when I say Nick Acato, people are like, oh, Papa God, it sounds like you're saying a bad word. I'm not trying to say bad words, okay? <clears throat> okay, it's just like fucking crazy. You guys are weird. I not heard anything from Alec Benson Leary, also known as Christopher, and the due date has been reached. It is time for total revelation. Alec Benson Leary. His real name is Christopher Paul Fat Man Whitney. From Antonio, Texas, San Antonio, Texas. Age 36. Unemployed and on welfare. His interests include... These things just sound like Chris. It's crazy because if like YouTube paid better back then, they probably wouldn't have to be unemployed and on welfare. Video games. They're really just like real. They're just trying to live the dream, man. You guys don't understand. They're just trying to live the dream, okay? Retirement, Xbox, folk music, theft and fraud, milk, comics, and dip. Milk? And what? eating online. Yeah, he's that famous hot tub and fat man on YouTube. They get fun, and guess what? Eating online. And recently, he ate a whole block of cheese. A whole block of cheese. I mean, bro, listen, honestly, mood. That's a whole fucking mood, dude. You ate a whole block of cheese? Oh no, Chris. Who doesn't do that? I'm gonna go to the store and get a bunch of mozzarella just to eat it now. Just because I feel inclined to do so, you know? Oh, 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 yeah. Oh, 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 see, don't see. Oh, 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 see, don't see. Oh, 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 see, don't see. What are you saying? And what is that? for the salt of the wound, I will be eating online for the one time, this time, to be enjoyed. Oh, Why is this here. salt in the wound? Does Chris think that, like, this guy, because he's eating online, owns eating online? What, what is the logic here? What the fuck are you on about? I cheesed up microwave book. Is that, an is that an American thing? Just eating a whole bunch of cheese? I feel like that's just, an, that's just a, a person thing, no? You know what I mean? Like, I'm just a Pizza. typical mug-blooded American. But I guess I am. Typical mug blood, blood, blood of American, I don't know. He proceeds to eat a pizza on camera. Okay. Well, thank you, Gino, for not making me watch him actually eat the pizza on camera. Mm, that was good. Oh, yeah. Oh, she's dancing. Oh, yeah. Oh, she's dancing. Oh, yeah. What does that mean? He's fat. Video and let me near in it for good. So, nothing else will be revealed about him. So, let's oh, see. Nice. Mustafito. I guess. But, Christopher Paul, your big fat balloon has been deflated. Oh. 
I guess that's disappointing for him, huh? At around this time, Chris produced some more videos meant for Jackie, which were leaked at a much later date. One featured him performing a cheerleader routine for her. Raw, raw, re, kick him in the knee. Raw, raw, re, kick him in the other knee. Just I can I hope that was just a warm up, Chris. That was terrible. J, A, C, J, I, E. I'm pretty sure he's a J. J A C J I E. Oh, Jackie. Who, that, who can't be beat? Jackie. Jackie. All right, so like I said last episode, there was, seems to be like a drastic shift, like a jump from to like being or f identifying as trans in some capacity. And it seems like it comes out of nowhere. And I still kind of believe that. But I'm starting to, th and I guess the, uh, the obvious evidence is that whoever this Jackie is, uh, whatever character from Among Us that is, is probably saying weird shit like, I like it when you dress like a cheerleader and you do X, Y, and Z. So I wouldn't doubt that, and that to me makes sense as to like where this is all coming from. Who's that girl that she's so sweet? Jackie! Jackie! In another, he performs a stripping routine set to the song Fuck the Pain Away by electronic artist Peaches. The tomboy blue. Oh, blue electronic heart. artist Peaches? What are you talking about? Peaches is fucking insane. Electronic artist Peaches, he says. Oh my god, that's funny, but what the fuck? Am I thinking of the wrong peaches? Am I am I the am I the suspicious character from Among Us here? Am I thinking of the wrong peaches? Hmm, maybe I am. Oh, that was the whole game I won. Oh my god, I just looked over the screen, he's fucking naked. God damn. For free? In early September, Bob was rushed to Martha Jefferson Hospital for heart complications. Oh, that's it. it was later revealed that he had to be placed in quarantine due to numerous bug bites all over his body. Caused oh by shit, they created COVID too? Oh my god. Bro, what haven't these people created? I'm just for serious. This is insane. They've 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 created everything. It, it feels like they fucking created COVID, bro. Holy moly! An infestation in their home. On September fourth, he celebrated his eighty fourth birthday in an intensive care unit. Wow. On September sixth, Christian posted a public note on Facebook, which functioned as an online attraction sign, using the social media network as his form to seek out females. Okay. His specifications for a potential partner included being 21 to 29 years old, cute, pretty, beautiful, or hot, between 4 feet 10 inches and 5 feet 10 inches, and well-informed to expert in sex. Well-informed to day. expert in sex? <laughs> Wait, why is there like a job experience there? What the fuck? Okay. Bob Chandler passed away from his heart difficulties. On the 7th, a bereaved Chris wrote an email to Jackie, trying oh, to make it. sense of what happened. This is the last publicized correspondence between Jackie and Chris. Wow. I cannot get to sleep. My heavier cries from my father's passing is really hitting me bad. Suffice to say, I'm feeling through multiple emotions. I, like my mother, cannot believe he is gone. Wow. In a dream I had years ago, the Grim Reaper made an appearance. I asked him directly. I understand my dad does not have long to live, but I have to ask while you're here. When will you be taking my father? He informed me that he would not claim his soul until the year 2015. So I've known since before 2005 that Robert had a good number of years left. 2015. Damn you, Reaper. This is 2011. I was promised that we'd be blessed with Father's presence for four more years. I was promised. Sigh. Upon assuming his responsibilities of household finances, bill paying, and helping my mother, I started reading his payment plan binder, figured out his chart organization, and got started okay with a better informed mind. I've been emotionally comforting to my mom and keeping her straight as she is still feeling drunk like weird, lonely, and sad. When I have my moment, I'm able to share a smile with her. Currently, she's sleeping in comfort up in my room, with a CD of big band romance tracks my Aunt Harriet offered to Robert for his 84th. At least now I have finally confirmed that you, a shorter than me woman, can crash on my couch and I would take the bed, without having feet hit me. I mean, I'm uncertain my bed is wide enough for two. I'll check in again later. Love you, Jackie. Chrissy. Also around this time, Chris had a phone conversation with a troll, possibly with Jackie, throughout which he cried and sobbed, talking about his father. The call was recorded, but the trolls involved decided not to release it out of respect. And now the recording is either still kept in secret by wow. select few head trolls or lost entirely. Jesus Christ, man.
That's just really heavy. Wow, so his father passed away, and um, that's obviously very sad. Yeah, that's crazy, man. So his father passed away, and I guess he he he, he he's taking on some level of like man of the house. The only reason I bring that up is because like I know what happened to him and his mother in the future, like the hor like the terrible thing he did, the horrible thing he did. And I wonder if it stems from that, it's some kind of weird like feeling of responsibility. I don't really know. I don't know, man. I mean, at least yeah, they at least were remorseful, for, remorseful for once, and didn't release the video. But Jesus Christ. Okay, yeah, it must the, the trolls actually finally didn't do something. Yeah, it's Well, okay, let's continue. From the 10th to the 19th of September, the quickie closed down and redirected to a page which simply stated Robert Franklin Chandler Jr., 1927 to 2011. What? Directed to a page. From the 10th to the 19th of September, the quickie closed down and redirected to a page which simply stated Robert Franklin Chandler Jr., 1927 to 2011. Back at home. Robert it's interesting because, like, his father passed away, and now, like, the trolls are being less respectful. I use that lightly because they probably know it's fucked up, but almost to them, it's probably like a, it's like a novella, it's like a telenovela, it's like a drum, it's like a soap opera, it's like a dramatic, like, oh my goodness, my favorite character died. You know what I mean? From their perspective, because they don't, they, I mean, they don't really care. You know what I mean? These people don't really. They probably feel kind of sad, and then they just get over it, and they move on, and they just start trolling again. Barbara and Christian collaborated in writing an obituary for Bob, which was published in two local papers. He was born on September 4th, 1927, in Texas, the son of the late Robert Franklin Chandler Sr. and Jean Holloman Chandler. On June 7, 1980, he married Barbara Ann Weston, who survives, and the couple gave birth to a son, Christian Weston Chandler, who survives. Also surviving is ex-wife Patricia, and their shared children, son Dr. David Allen Chandler, survives, and daughter Carol Suzanne Chandler, survives. He graduated from Auburn University with a degree in engineering. He served in the United States Army Seoul, Korea in the Signal Corps during the Korean War. He worked for General Electric as an engineer with steels, plastics, etc. He also had patents for the controls for plastic molding machines. Without him, wow. we would not have even a simple plastic funnel. Also surviving our granddaughter, Savannah Chandler, the daughter of David Allen Chandler and his wife, Kimberly. A funeral service will be held at Monticello Memory Gardens in Charlottesville, Virginia, 10 a.m. Monday, September 12, 2011. A memorial service to follow on a later date at Wesley Memorial United Methodist Church. Instead of flowers, you may make monetary donations to his widow, Barbara Chandler, and son, Christian Chandler. That's fair. During the funeral service on September 12th, it is known that Dr. David Chandler, Bob's son from his first marriage, came to pay his condolences. Chris gave presents to him and also for his daughter, Savannah. Bob's daughter Carol, however, was not present for the service. Robert was cremated and his remains why. were placed in the columbarium niche with plans for Barbara to share that space when the time came. At around this time, a person aware of Chris Chan took a photo of him while he was returning to his car. This was quickly shared on the quickie. Why? Meanwhile, a troll submitted one of Chris's earliest sonnetry drawings to the publisher of the comic. See, like nobody cares. Like, oh, it's it's the day that his father passed. Hey guys, what if we what if we memed it? Look, I saw him. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like nobody gives a shit. Flylock Fox and Comics for Kids, and was printed in thousands of newspapers on September 25th as a hand-picked featured example of a budding child artist credited to Christian Weston Chandler, age nine. On October 16th, Chris listed an old CRT TV set for sale on the Classifieds advertisement website, Craigslist. In the description, he described it as being an optimal television for watching sporting events, movies, television shows, and more on. For $250? Is that, is that like a, is that a little bit too much, do we think? Does that seem like a bit much, maybe? He wanted to sell it for at least $250. It is unconfirmed if anyone bought the TV set. Feels on like October 28th, possibly while out shopping, Barbara and Chris happened to cross the game place, which had a banner placed across the top of the entrance, which said that the store had come under new ownership of Mike and Madeline. Wondering if the Mike in question was in fact manager oh Michael goodness. Snyder, they went inside to have a look. They spotted Snyder, who promptly asked them to leave. Chris took a picture right, of Michael and the interior of the store with his Nintendo 3DS. Snyder accompanied them back to their car, wherein Chris took two more photos of him. What happened next isn't quite clear, but whatever transpired resulted in both Christian and Barbara getting individually charged with a class 5 felony, failing oh to stop God. after hitting Michael Snyder. It is thought that the two felony charges- Oh, they hit him with the car, no? Isn't that what happened? ...that one of them was driving the car when they hit Snyder, then Chris and Barbara switched seats and struck him again. They tried to flee the scene, but were stopped by police. Oh, they were questioned about what had happened and were about to arrest Christian, but his mother tried to stop them, which earned her another felony charge, assaulting a law enforcement official. They were both promptly arrested and sent to jail. 
They were bailed out the following- Is Michael Snyder okay? Like, what the fuck? Oh my god. ...day by Chris's pastoral counselor, Rocky Shoemaker. On November 1st, Michael Snyder filed a civil suit against the Chandlers, and was later granted a preliminary protective order against them, meaning that they were prohibited from engaging in any threatening behavior toward him. Three days later, was Chris uploaded the three photos he normal? took of Snyder onto the quickie, and added captions mocking his weight, and calling him a child molesting Jew, with the word Jew crossed out and then replaced with Gentile. What? Wait, what? Three days later, Chris uploaded the three photos he took of Snyder onto the quickie, and added captions mocking his weight, and calling him a child molesting Jew. How are you gonna make fun of his weight, first of all, Chris? I mean, no offense, but you're fat as fuck, but okay. Jesus Christ, Chris is a real piece of shit, holy fuck. With the words Jew crossed out and then replaced with Gentile. See, these are those moments where, like, even though Chris gets relentlessly trolled, like, this is where people are like, I don't care because he's a piece of shit. And it's like, well, you know, it's unfortunate. On November 7th, Barbara and Chris appeared in court to be formally charged with the three- Who's Michael Snyder? I he works at the game place. I think he used to be the manager, and now I guess he bought it, so, like, he owns it now. Um, you know, so- Felonies, in addition to two misdemeanors committed by Chris, which were assault and battery, possibly against Snyder, and trespassing. While in church, Chris was recommended to hire politician Rob Bell, Republican what? member of the Virginia House of Delegates, to be their defense attorney. What? It was later revealed that Bob had left his family with an inheritance of tens of thousands of dollars, but Barbara decided to spend it all to hire Bell as their lawyer. Wow. So, Ra I mean, I wonder how much money he actually was able to leave. But, I mean, they left a bunch of money, and then they used it all to hire the lawyer instead of, like, taking the L. Okay. On the 19th, an audio advertisement for a sweetheart, which Christian had made over three years prior, was discovered and shared online. Wow. Its exact purpose or intended use is unknown. My name you should have called Saul. Yeah, very good point. Thank you so Thank you so much for that uh, very solid... Um... Thank you. That's a good recommendation. I appreciate that. Thank you. My name is uh, Christian. I'm uh, currently 26 years old. I'm looking for a boyfriend-free woman to be my sweetheart from the ground up. Preferably uh, one who's, well, you know, just, I don't mind about preferences. But anyway, uh, definitely smoke-free, non-alcoholic. And, uh, yeah, you know, just an honest good girl to be my, to be my, to be my sweetheart. To be a sweetheart. I like how he's changed. To, he has, like, no qualifications anymore because I guess he's desperate, which makes sense, but. Heart quality. So, uh, yeah, send me a message uh, if you're interested. Have a good day. On December 8th, a troll under the guise of a court-appointed psychiatrist called Rocky Shoemaker and oh, discovered man. some previously undisclosed information about the Chandlers. Hello? Oh my god, bro, see, this is like a HIPAA violation, it feels like. Hold on, I gotta... On December 8th, a troll under the guise of a court-appointed psychiatrist called Rocky Shoemaker and discovered some previously undisclosed information about the Chandlers. Oh, dude, come on. Like, this is a fucking such a line crosser, bro. You're gonna call as some kind of a... You're gonna call as, a, like, a, ther a counselor? Hello? Oh, good afternoon. Uh, is this uh, Miss Shoemaker? Yes. Oh, thank you. Um, I'm, uh, my name is uh, Dr. Perrin. Uh, I was appointed by the court to uh, give a, an assessment of Chris's mental health. Have you been aware of any of this? I uh, no, I don't have any authorization to talk to anybody about this. Oh, so then you should not talk. Hopefully, she doesn't talk about it. Well, he suggested that we give you a call. You've been his uh, pastoral counselor for some time. Yeah, but I would have to see something in writing, uh, simply because I have been getting a lot of unauthorized phone calls from the court or from this office. From 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 people claiming to be part of all this. They then begin to discuss a possible meeting taking place at the Chandler residence. He, uh, well, I don't know, he's um, requested that we liaise there, and uh, Mr. Bell seems to have gone along with us. Oh, he is meeting you at his home? Yes. Hmm. And like uh, I said, it, it was a little that, unorthodox. It, it not only would be unorthodox, but I think you'll have a very difficult time work getting anything done in that home. Well, how, simply why? because, uh, because I have things I know about the conditions of the home. Personally, I wouldn't have a problem with even uh, seeing the address itself to get a kind of understanding of the perspective from uh, Christian's angle. Mm hmm They um, are having an infestation problem in that home. Oh, really? And, yeah, and, and the health department has, has already visited there. And oh my goodness. it would probably not be a real wise place for you to go. Are they still living there, or have they taken up uh, alternate accommodation? Because according to uh, Mr. No, Bell and, no. and Christian, they were still living there. 
yeah, they are still living there. Well, that shouldn't that shouldn't be at all. No, no, it shouldn't. And um, the social services and the health department have have been a part of that. I'm, and, I'm not uh, happy to hear about this infestation problem, though, especially with Christian the way he is. This this has has been has been a situation ongoing over many months, and um, Christian seems to feel that he has stayed away from it, uh, but that requires him to stay just in one room. The infestation. Um, I I don't think. Like, okay, so she was doing really well with not giving out any information until, of course, she started giving out information. All of a sudden, this woman, I was like, okay, at least she's fucking not an idiot. And now, of course, you know, she's kind of an idiot. Um, I guess that's a kind of life here, though. Interesting. Uh, wow. It's, it's, well, interesting. Okay. Christian would be comfortable with me coming there. Personally, I have no problem going down there myself. I'm sure I've seen far worse places whatever kind of infestations are going on. Um, but I was kind of hoping that we could have counted on your support to come along, if only to, to, um, to, sort, of, to sort of handle the introductions in a personal way with uh, somebody that Christian already knows. Yeah. Uh, I would not think that that would be a good place to do the interview. They're going to be defensive. Well, They're we, going to be trying to Christian, protect you from... Yes. Uh, the, the nurses that went out there found that a very difficult place to try to work with them. Which nurses were these? Public health nurses. Now, how long ago was that? Was that, was that fairly recent? That that was around the time of his father's death. They I were have, out there because of patient no discharge procedures and such. And he was he was while he was in the hospital under quarantine. Christian because was. of it. No, a Christian's father. Oh, oh. She's just so giving he, him so much he contracted something from the from the infestation. He he had had bug bites all over him. Good girl. Well, that's... All right, I think the best way to proceed... I mean, that's probably a contributing factor to why the guy passed away, but Jesus Christ, man. Like, what a... What a what an overstep for the for this whole interaction to even be happening in the first place. Like, calling his home and all this. It's a fucking shame, bro. If you could... If you could um, speak with your church outreach group, if you could try and find some temporary accommodation for Christian and his mother, uh, just until the uh, the court case is over, and we can perhaps see if we can get the state to fund a, a cleanup or, or something in the property, because that's quite horrendous. I really doubt that they would receive that offer at all. They have not received help from social services. Well, you can understand why it would be in Christian's best interest if you could do that, because if he was to go to the court and they were to present an assessment with, that he was living in such conditions along with his mother, then it would not fare well on mm -hmm. him at all, and they would perhaps be completely evicted from the property, and that wouldn't be in their interest, even in the least. Yeah, um, I, I, I can, I can see, I can see your point, and I'll, I'll certainly talk with Mr. Bell about yes. about whether he would rather see Christian in such a situation. So perhaps we could do that. Mm -hmm. uh, dude, so that's so fucked up. See, this guy's a piece of shit. So like, it sounds like their living conditions are abysmal. And that's just the truth of the matter, and it's not good. I'm not saying it's good, but that's like the way things are. And I don't think that they're going to get better by them trying to evict Christian from his house, which is what they're effectively saying. It's like, oh, maybe we can make it better by getting him evicted. I don't think that that's the path to solving this problem, but that's what this guy's talking about. It's like, oh, maybe you can go and... um. Maybe you can go and, and, and tell him to, uh, you know, blah, blah, blah. Maybe you see if you can get him evicted, whatnot. It's like, holy shit. Like, that, that could be, like, potentially really harmful for them. Like, that's not good. That's fucking crazy, man. Mm -hmm. All right. I've got to be getting off. But thank you very much for speaking. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Goodbye. God damn. I was not expecting any of that. With his father's death, for the most part, Trolls decided to leave Chris completely alone and not intrude in his affairs, silencing his online world. But his run-ins with the law caused many eyes to turn their gaze back onto him. Well, it doesn't. what you just said is not substantiated by exactly what we just heard. It sounds like they're doing the opposite of what you said, and they're going in on Chris, some of them at least. But okay. Whether he was conscious of it or not, Christian would soon show that the internet spotlight was too alluring for him to stay away for good. Wow. Jesus. At this point, the trolls became good guys. I don't think so. You guys want a thirty a double header? All right, we'll do a double header. We'll do part. We'll do part thirty-seven as well, just for you guys. Okay. That one. These ones. This is an intense stream day. Though, I'll tell you that much. What made him this way? 
What is the attraction? What is the attraction? What keeps us fascinated? This is the story of Chris Chan. On January 5th, 2012, Barbara and Christian Chandler appeared in court to face a hearing for their criminal and civil trials to account for their actions against the new owner. Oh, sorry, what a bad picture of her, though. <laughs> owner of the game place, Michael Snyder, on October 28th, 2011. Their case was granted a continuance by the judge until April 16th. On January 11th, Chris made his Facebook account public and made a post about communicating with his real-life friends. At the time, he was connected with five people, which included his longtime real-life gal pal, Anna McLaren, and the troll, Kim Wilson. After this, he began using Facebook very frequently, writing out his thoughts and sharing them with his supposed friends and onlookers. On the 19th, he made several posts expressing his loneliness and his regretful naivety during high school, which prevented him from acquiring a girlfriend. He feared that- Maybe. Chris, just how lower- Well, you're not lower. Change your standards to people with intellectual disabilities. You're good. His lack of a partner would cause a premature death. After posting on Facebook on a near daily basis, talking about his lack of friends and his autism tutorial on LittleBigPlanet 2, on January 26th, he made a string of posts about Michael Snyder. I just am really pissed off with that Snyder advertising the place, not of Seaville, as misrepresented in the place's renaming, during this court crap mom and I are having versus that bird. And in two pages of this year's NBC29 Check Us Out mailing, it is so offensive to me. He may as well be going out against his own restraining order by standing on my own doorstep with a video player, showing his cheap TV ad, waving a blow-up copy of his 10% off coupon like the US flag, and chucking a mud pie in my face. The place is nothing but a meeting place and breeding ground for the perverted trolls and cyberbullies that have been torturing me the past greater than four freaking years. I want to see that place burned to the ground. Oh my god. Anna then interjected, commenting that it may look bad for him if someone found his words and brought them up in court. On January 30th, yeah. he updated his profile photo, asking if he still looked attractive. That is a good point. He's in a he's currently in a legal battle with this guy, and he's like, oh, somebody should burn it to the ground. Doesn't look too good, Chris. Does not look too good. Just saying, okay? You really shouldn't be doing that that shit. You look like an idiot. Um, but, you know, you do you, brother, I guess. But how have so much money? Kim told him that he looked like her supposedly favorite actor, Jeff Daniels, and shared a still of him from the 1994 comedy, Dumb okay. and Dumber. Chris replied, stating that he had an ugly mug, and that the photo did not make him feel better about himself. Kim then offered him some advice. Chris, please don't be so negative. When you're negative like that, especially to people you don't even know, it radiates to those around you. It makes you seem unfriendly and unapproachable, whether you intend for it or not. If you're happy, stupid. friendly- Why? This is so stupid. Are people like, are the people being like serious about this, like this criticism here? It's like the guy's, you know, whatever, mother just died or father just passed away. And we're like, Chris, you know, if you want to be happier, maybe don't be such a dickhead. And it's like, yeah, that's fair advice generally, but maybe this isn't like appropriate for like right now, you know? and have an open mind, people can tell. It's like a type of sixth sense, and are more likely to approach you. Colon close parentheses. The next day, he told his Facebook friends to download his photo onto their phones, or preferably print it out and show it to women, asking if he looked cute or not. And if they ask, tell them I am single. And if they ask how am I still single, do not hesitate to inform them. He is very shy and high-functionally autistic. Tell them not to Google my name, or just leave my name out of the conversation. Kim seemed to be the- How are you going to leave the name out of the conversation if- how do you how do you leave his name out of the situation if he's like oh you think this guy's cute oh yeah i do can i have the information oh no i can't do that like you know what i mean it doesn't really make a lot of a whole lot of sense there the only person to allegedly do this by showing his photo to her girlfriends and informed him that they recognized him from the mall and suggested that he would have more luck if he approached women instead though chris thought himself too shy to ever attempt that three days later obese youtuber fat man made a response video to the august 2011 video you need to tell us that he's an ob the obese Uber fat man. Like, I think we already know. You know what I mean? Like, he looks like, you know what I mean? Obese Uber fat man. Yeah, I, I, I could kind of tell. <laughs> like, it is logically sound. But like, okay, well, you didn't, we already know. You know? Video in which Chris accuses him of being a obese YouTuber. Pop a gut. Imagine that. <laughs> that would be kind of funny, actually, if people talked about me like that. That would be a little funny. Like Benson Leary. Fat man here again. Now, I just want to is he censoring his stomach? <laughs> I hate this. That Christian Wesson Chandler, or CWT, say whatever his dumbass name is, True. is a dumbass. Folks. And he's a dumbass because he thinks I stole some sign of shoes, shitty characters, or anything from Alec Benson Larry, but I ain't no Alec Benson Larry. My name is Christopher Paul Whitney, folks. 
I've been rotten on not San Antonio, Texas. This guy is such a fucking dumbass, folks, okay? So in closing, Chris and Washington Chandler is a dumbass. And you should stop being a fucking idiot. Okay, well, it's fair. And now next one, Aussie to Aussie. Bye now. On February 4th, Chris read his horoscope, which stated that he should keep his business only to himself and his associates, or run the risk of being encouraged ad nauseum. He interpreted well, that is a good thing to do. You should probably listen to that advice, Chris. ...did it as needing to return to the fashion square to resume his sweetheart search quietly. When he went to the mall, he brought with him up to 50 copies of a 10% coupon from the gameplace, which he had altered to say that it was a breeding ground for trolls and cyberbullies. Wait, what? Okay. Okay. Sorry, I need a second to, to process this information. Okay, so he went. <laughs> oh my god. Um, hold on a second. Uh, what I was going to say is that, um, okay, so he the whole thing is he's going to the mall with these tickets, right? And they're fake tickets. And I'm assuming they're fake uh, the discount tickets so that he can, tr in some capacity, troll the mall. So he's got these fake tickets so that he can troll, oh, excuse me, the gameplays. He can troll the gameplays. Um, but on the tickets, he said it's a breeding ground for, like, whatever, like, bad people. So it's not really going to, it's not going to be a very easy way to troll people. It's all to troll the gameplays. It's also easily, like, verifiably false so what's stopping them from being like yeah we know this isn't like real so we're just not gonna we're not gonna honor this coupon what's stopping them from doing that this is the worst chris is, chris is the worst troll in the world bro what the hell you're terrible to discourage customers from coming there he would place the warning cards at various places as he went oh he then wrote up an cards? account of an encounter with security personnel I took my normal once around the mall before settling down to hang, but I impulsively decided to leave. I thought they were discount coupon. I'm so confused. Like, I feel like anybody would look at that and go like, this is stupid. That this wouldn't work. A few photos as I walked. Eventually, I settled for my hand at a table of the S-Box kiosk. I called my mother to check in. While ringing, a jerk op wandered into my space. I saw one to a handful of my warning photos. Damn, wandered into my space? Shit, see, I told you guys, Facebook is, the, is, is superior to my space. In his right hand, I felt shocked with surprise. Mom answered. I played it cool with her while I started to get up and walk away. We finished the chat. She hung up. I hung up as I walked. Then I looked back. The jerk cop following me said something. I started running into the JCP. I hid in the back for a moment. The JC Penny. Moment <laughs> to catch myself. I thought it best to leave and return another day. Okay. Set to exit by the one with the salon. He and an accomplice intercepted me. You're not in any trouble, the jerk cop said. The hell I was not. Or why would the son of a bitch be chasing after me? True. I exited by the south exit instead. Wait, so this so this cop is just kind of walking around and Chris is just sprinting away from him. Is that that is that is that what we're being told here? I mean, I guess I get it. I feel, like yesterday when I went to Dave and Buster's with my wife, I swear to God, one of the managers or whatever you'd call it, that place, one of the one of the bodyguards, I guess you'd call him, really. I mean, he was walking around like he owned the place. He's got the black suit on. There's a couple of them like that. I was like, what are you doing? He's following me around. I don't understand. Like, what did I do wrong? All right. I don't know what I did wrong. He's following me around. Eventually, he stopped following me. He also gave me advice at one point. I bought, we bought uh, tickets to this, not tickets, but we did like a, this crane game thing. But you're, apparently, you're guaranteed to win. So, like, if you lose, you get to keep playing until you win. And we just kept putting money into it and not realizing that. So, we had a few <laughs> extra tokens. He's like, you don't have to do that. I was like, oh, okay, thanks. You know, but it was, it's confusing when people follow you. Obviously, uh, for obvious reasons. Eh? I veered my way around the eastwards to the Mitsu I was driving, far east from the East Belk entrance. I started along the outer edge of the parking lot. I was spotted by the accomplice, but I was too fast for him, and I was tactful hiding and weaving around the parked cars to get to oh, mine. Okay. I see the act catching up as I was close to my car. Those dumbasses probably thought to search for my escort, not a Mitsubishi. The jerk up called out to me by name once during the mess. I was not going to associate with anyone without my familiarity of of him slash her. Cheap internet fame is just not worth a shit! I got into my car and escaped swiftly, leaving behind a confused accomplice. Now I rest at an McD with an Arnold Palmer tea and apple slices, rehydrating myself and rest. How do you have an Arnold Palmer tea at a Mickey McDonald's? Is that like a thing? Can you get, is that like a, a thing from other states? I get like a Coke Zero. I actually get Diet Coke. I like, my wife likes Coke Zero more than Diet Coke. I don't get it personally, but. Resting while typing my story up. My mother does not need to know of what happened. 
Four days later, Jacqueline and Romy created a new Facebook account to Chris's delight. Oh my god. He then posted a photo of himself and Jackie lying in bed, represented by Lego pieces, happy that they would rekindle their relationship and- I thought he was like, I thought he was he's getting good at Photoshop. Turns out it's just Legos. Reestablish oh. contact. After having some conversations about what women like, he began working on a new dating education comic and shared with her a preview photo of a new page, though it was difficult to decipher due to the low quality of his computer's camera. In early February, Christian participated in an event in Toys R Us. I mean, the, the, the sentiment is almost cute because Chris gets advice about dating and he's like, oh, I got to share this advice with people. I guess it's wow, cute is an interesting word to use there, but you know what I'm saying. In which he built a lemonade stand out of Legos in support of the childhood cancer charity, Alex Lemonade Stand. Those weren't Legos, bro. Those were, those were uh, what are they called? Duplo blocks. Okay. And he also learned that he could register to host his own personal lemonade stand and contribute his earnings to the charity. He decided that he would run his lemonade stand in June oh, and quickly set up nice a page on the charity's website under the name Quickville Helps. He wrote that he would do it in honor of his father, who he claimed died of cancer. Chris said his... God damn it, Chris. What is... Wait, how... that's not how his father passed, though. Didn't his father pass to, like, a heart complication? Or is that what he had said? Or it had something to do, I think, with the infection that he got, you know, from all the... Probably the unclean living spaces but uh no not roblox like ro there's this thing called duplo duplo blocks they're larger legos that was the joke his goal to 50 dollars, which was quickly raised through online donations from trolls oh nice on february 13th he was caught showing the middle finger to a law enforcement officer by his mother okay. which upset her and in turn upset him as well okay well they could, on february good, 18th they, upset chris them? asked anyone on facebook for the current whereabouts of his former friend megan schroeder because he believed that she was the seed of the smear campaign against him on the internet he wanted to bring her in before his attorney, politician Rob Bell, for questioning. He then posted a photo of her and her brother John. The thing with Megan is a major lot to elaborate. In short though, I had little knowledge and understanding of details when I thought she was a victim. The trolling started before November 2007. Conversations- Why does she actually think that it was her? I don't get it. ...between her and Mr. Snyder were overheard by my mother. I was, from her perspective, weird, different, my good intentions greatly misunderstood, stalker-like, etc. Yeah, but, I mean, all those things, I could see why. I mean, it's unfortunate that, like, it seems like that's who you are because of your autism. That's, which sucks for you, of course, but, like, I could see why she would interpret it like that. So. It all together. She is the seed of all of that evil. Both my parents knew. I was ignorant for the long time up till now. Two days later, he shared her life. Her parents, wait, his parents were swearing that that's what happened? Well, that seems very irresponsible of them to pass that information on like that. Last known home address on Facebook. On February 24th, the day of Chris's 30th birthday, the YouTube channel, The Quickville Library, leaked over 10 previously unseen videos from Chris, which had been originally made for Jackie. Oh my These God. included his date videos with his sex doll, a censored version of Cake Farts, and his dance video filmed in a Walmart dressing room. Also included was a more recent video that- Oh, so the videos we've already seen were leaked. We just didn't, at the time, we had we didn't know about it? Is that what we're saying? Okay. They filmed at McDonald's, Maybe. focusing on his mother, Barbara. You got your digital camera. Yeah. There's a little something there. Uh, uh, just you. Oh. Because I love you. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, are we having fun today? Uh, are we having fun right now? Okay. You know you're very pretty. You're always pretty. You know. I don't know, dude. Maybe it's just because I know what, what, like I like know what happened already with the him and his mom. But this comes off as like really creepy. Like really creepy. Okay, we'll have fun. Hmm? What? <laughs> yeah. The shirt I picked out from Goodwill the other day. Yeah. I am free as a bird, and this clothes you cannot change. <laughs> yes. On February 27th, he expressed his hatred for a recent YouTube video from Sega, in which the video presenters showing the prizes up for grabs in Sega's Free Stuff Friday competition passively mentioned Sonichu. Um, what? This is on Sonichu? No. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> oh, what are you doing? You can't. You can't do that. She she mentioned Sonic Chew. She's a confirmed troll. Oh no! Fire this woman. Don't do that. That's cancel culture. But oh no! Our licensing group gives us uh, stuff to give away, so this is actually available for. Bro, free. he completely ignored it too. You know he's pissed. You know he's pissed about it. Somewhere, and we'll track that down. Uh... Throughout oh, March, no. Chris continued to express his loneliness in the form of. Wait, that's it. There has to be more to that 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 Sonic Chew thing. 
That was crazy to me. I mean, I thought that was crazy. Maybe I'm just being silly, but that was fucking nuts. I would have been pissed too if I was that guy. It sounds like he's her boss. You know? Updates on Facebook. That's yep. why you shouldn't let women into the workplace because they're so stupid. You know? <laughs> he also revealed that he and his mother wished that Bob were still alive, but they felt his presence in the house, and Chris sometimes spoke with him in his dreams. Okay. On March 24th. I feel that, man. When my, when my dog passed away, I love my dog a lot. So when my dog passed away, I had a dream about my dog. And it was just laying in bed with me. It felt very real. It was crazy. Isn't that fucking nuts? Fourth, Chris and Barbara traveled to Washington, D.C. to attend a live show version of the popular Discovery Channel series, Mythbusters. Okay. He took several photos with his handheld console, the PlayStation Vita, which he had recently gotten for his birthday. He had a myth-related question prepared about camel milk's effectiveness in curing autism for the show's question and answer session, but was ultimately not selected to contribute a query. Hey, it's transphobic. You didn't select Chris? Probably because he, he's probably because he's trans. They, it, what? Or they're a tom girl. It's some kind of phobic. I don't know. Three days later, he made a post about his carnal desires. Why? I need some sex. I'm no different from everyone else on that topic. I get horny. I think about it often. I'm dreaming of inserting my rod A into female slot V, followed by some lost genetics. Being an adult virgin sucks. Abstinence is a joke. I'm lonely. I'm tired of being ignored and overlooked in public by women. I need some yeah. sex. He r really is a fucking incel. Holy shit. Four days later, he elaborated about his concerns concerning his impending court date. My court date is coming up, and there is a risk of me either having the charges from Snyder dropped, or me landing in jail. And if my destiny is jail, I will starve myself. I do not want to die a virgin either. I need help immediately. Oh, well, Chris, if you go to jail, you might not be a virgin anymore. Could be, you know, I know that's a terrible, it's terrible what I'm saying, but you never know. You know, it's terrible, but... Immediately. Please send her my way in person. Time for polite conversation and getting to know optional. Anne replied with a joke about him losing his virginity in prison. Chris didn't seem to notice. These recent desperate proclamations of wanting to lose his virginity encouraged an unknown person whom he trusted to arrange to have Chris's virginity taken Ooh, by a prostitute. Nice. They offered him with some phone numbers of a few viable candidates they had found on the website Backpage.com. Evidently, it seemed like he got his wish fulfilled, as on April 4th, Christian simply wrote on Facebook, I am not a virgin anymore. Wow, that's something. I am not a virgin anymore. Wow. And someone says, what? Explain. He says, now, now, ladies, I don't kiss and tell with a wink. Oh, my God. You know what this reminds me of? You guys are not going to get the reference, but if you do get the reference, uh, you're going to love this. I, it's like Jason Genova. I don't know if you guys know who Jason Genova is, but like he's a pro person that probably has autism. Uh, and he's somebody, he's the Christian of the bodybuilding misc forms. Okay. There's a lot of different Christians, honestly. And uh, I remember <laughs> seeing a video of him like sleeping with a prostitute. And he's like, yeah, you like that big head or something like that. It's just it's so fucking stupid, dude. And declines to elaborate. You, kind of, you fell into the Genova hole? Yeah, dude. Back in the day, my a friend of mine at work called him on his like cell phone. It was bizarre. And he's listened. That was when everybody was accusing him of taking steroids. Because I think he was actually taking testosterone. <laughs> um, it's crazy. It further. On that same day, he wrote a detailed account of his experience to the person who gave him the list of prostitutes to choose from. I arrive at the predetermined destination of the intersection of 29 and 250. Therein right. lies over four hotels, including the nearby English Inn. Why you gotta why you gotta dox the prostitution service or whatever, man? You can't be you can't be giving out that sensitive information. Come on, bro. I stay assumed with the days in. I try again with Riley. You're gonna get, you're gonna get her fired. You're gonna get her ass fired from her job. And I shot for Christy. Riley did not answer at all. Kristen stated, I'm very busy now. So, in my cell contacts, out of the ones you have provided for me from the back page, I call up the one I had assumed as a long shot because of the enclosed image of a company logo on her page. The one called Mia Ham. Ham is not her real last name, and no I am H O. It does not do her justice. She deserves a better name than that. She answers, I introduced myself, told her I found her on the back page. She sounded mature in her voice, down to earth. I arrive at her door uh, and knock uh. three times. It's about 4 30 p.m. She opens and invites me in. Unexpectedly, but not surprising, I was also greeted with the smell of aged smoke. She had done the weed. I complained a little, and I sniff up a small handful of hands. <laughs> Could you just imagine Chris in that situation? Like, just complaining about smoke with, like, the cadence in his voice? <laughs> like, the weed smoke? Oh, my God. Sanitizer. It quelled it down for me. Mia was very nice, likable, and down-to-earth. And she was 24. I forgot to mention, she greeted me in a black lace negligee. She had an average figure. Her breasts were a C. She had a lip ring bobble, tongue ring bobble, and ring bobbles in each of her fine nipples. We casually stripped for each other. Bobble? What does that mean? A, like a 
like a titty piercing? Why are you calling them bobbles? Okay. Other. We communicated good throughout. She was fixed, but she insisted I be protected as well. She offers me a green apple flavor. She was fixed. Oh, so she couldn't have babies. She was fed, probably not the correct language there, uh, Chris. Flavored condom. I lie on the bed naked. She was naked. She had the condom in the edge of her lips. She mounts it onto my most erect penis, and she gives me a very good BJ. Her tongue bubble was a very delightful and stimulating bonus onto my hard one. As she blows me, I place my hands on her shoulders. After she was done, she laid beside me. Her pussy was wet. We handled each other. Her vaginal opening felt really good, and I found her clit, yet she was very clear about me keeping my fingers outside. I respected her request. Then we roll into each other. We make out, no tongues, with peckings and open mouth. We touch- How do you make out with no tongue? Okay, whatever. Touched each other. Her skin was very smooth. My five o'clock made my chin a bit rough. Her long, black hair was silky, smooth, and shiny. Her blue eyes smiled at me, and so did she. I gave her a sample of my strong-handed massage that my mother enjoyed in the past. Me what? Okay, there's so much going on here that just creeped me out. You gave you you gave her a sm like a okay. All right, so you gave her a massage that your mother enjoys in the past. It just makes me feel uncomfortable, like a little uncomfy, you know. Why are you giving people massage? Like, what is it? Like, do you find that massage to be sexual? Um, that's what I'm kind of going getting at. Like, why did you give it to your mom? Okay, whatever. I don't care. Mia really liked that. Then I, I bet she didn't. I mean, she just said that she likes it a lot. But I guess for an autistic person or person with autism, it might be like a little difficult to figure out what is and is not like an enjoyable experience for other people. I wonder. Uh, that's, that's, an, that's a whole conversation I have. Felt and informed her that I was ready to go in. I requested cowgirl with possible missionary later, but that did not happen. Her pelvic thrusts were amazing. Her pussy was tight, even after pushing two daughters out of there years ago, oh and God. I supported her thrusts with my hands on her knees, weaving back and forth. I also gave her breasts a good thrusting. I felt her front- What do you mean? What does that mean? Would you give her breasts a good thrusting? I don't understand what that means. Is he fucking her tits or whatever? Pelvic bone, which really made the top of the game. She came and I came, but on my coming, it was only half felt, and the semen that was mostly outside, but a smidge on the outside of the condom confirmed it. Then I washed my dick with a washcloth I brought with me, and dried it off with a towel I also brought. I was really satisfied. Then we conversed the rest of the $150 hour. It was very pleasant. She is a mother of two. They're staying with her mama. Papa Bear dished Mia. It is very sad. She goes from town to town, and she is getting education for a better future along the way. Her individual escort service is a quick spot of cash for her. God bless her and her family. I also told her a bit of myself here and there, including the trolls slash cyberbullies. Mia is also half Cherokee, so that was an unexpected good bonus. I told Because Chris is also half Cherokee. Like a half of 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 a half. Of a half. Wow, really interesting. Um, so you know what's so you know what's very interesting to me, and, and I don't know if this is the experience of this prostitute. I remember I have a friend, and the first time I met them was at work. And I remember the first time I did meet them, it was like early in the morning. I was working a different shift because they were experimenting with some kind of new program at the, my job. And it was raining outside, and we worked outside. And the first thing he says in like the weirdest Boston accent is like, ah, it's pouring like a bastard out here. And I was like, that was really weird. Why would you? I would, and that's the first thing I ever that's person ever said to me. I was like, that's kind of weird. Right. So then later on, I, uh, I I never had worked with him before that. I was working in like a different play, like a different yard, right? So I probably should have established that. I was working in a different yard at the time. So then I went and I, I relocated to that yard because I had gotten like a promotion and that's where the position was available. And then I started talking to him more. And the longer I talked to him, the more I realized he's a little off. I don't think that it would be... He might have autism. All right? And I'm not, that's not an insulting thing to say. Um, I'm not trying to be rude. Okay? What I'm getting at here is that the first few times I interacted with him, I thought that he was like... <laughs> Sorry, I'm not trying to be a dickhead here, but I thought he was like normal, you know? <laughs> I kind of found out that he's, you know, and he's not diagnosed or anything. It's a whole conversation. It's a whole complicated story. Anyway, I wonder if the prostitute originally thought that Chris was a normal, like, a, I don't mean to say normal, like, in a, in a bad way, but I wonder if Chris, the, the prostitute, was just like, oh, this is like a person, and, does, and then it doesn't realize until after they have sex and a little while later that they're somebody that has autism. You know what I mean? Like, I wonder if they were instantly able to figure that out. Because I can imagine the rest of the uh, the night could have been a very bizarre thing for her situation, you know? Um, 
you know, so I don't Those know. a few funny bits. He informed her of what I knew of the weed from Family Guy and that one episode of South Park, Medicinal Fried Chicken. We had a few good laughs. Then her clock chimes, alerting her that her next appointment was arriving, so we hugged another time, and I got out of her hair. I promised I would call her later. I did, about 6.30. She had already finished with the next fellow. He was a disappointment to her. His was smaller than mine, a wiener in a hallway situation. Okay. I, what do I say to this? A wiener in the hallway situation? I mean, I know what they're saying, but like, why... In the way that he's saying this, it sounds like they had like a positive, like interaction almost and i it's hard to believe but imagine they've dated or something i don't know she really enjoyed my dick and my personality i pray the best blessings for her and her daughters plus i may well likely see her again another month when she's in town and if i'm not in jail yeah i mean like i'm trying to say like it sounds like she's giving him compliments because you know that's good for business it's like yeah let me compliment this guy i might be able to get him back as a client um okay the whole thing felt natural to me the further it went. I was also surprised that I did not have premature ejaculation. Is this dating? <laughs> yeah, being a prostitute, that's dating. It was awesome, pleasant, and so good. Worth it. Only you, until my girlfriend comes around, knows the story. Well, but as for everyone else, all bucks, they will ever huh? get to read from me is, I am not a virgin anymore. Okay. Four days later, he shared some more details about his experience in a private post on Facebook. He mentioned her Cherokee heritage and that she enjoyed his penis. Chris added that he had given her a gift basket as a token of his gratitude. Wow. How interesting. I mean, maybe that would be really nice for her because she's probably normally just kind of used and they move on. So maybe him giving her gift baskets makes her feel really nice. I don't really know, but that is certainly interesting. He explained in a later email to an online gal pal that the gift basket contained three apples, a lavender air freshener, breath mints, a four gigabyte flash drive containing the setlist originally played during Bob's guest appearance on WTJU Radio in 1990, and a Hello Kitty pest dispenser. He revealed that he had told his mother that he and Mia met at Walmart, had a pleasant conversation, and then exchanged phone numbers. On April 9th, Chris fuck? and his mother went to visit some of Barbara's relatives in Red Oak, Virginia. But they say, I thought they were going to say when to go visit the fucking uh, the prostitute. I was like, okay, well, that's something, huh? She planted fresh flowers at her father's and her sister Karina's graves, and enjoyed some time away from their stressful situation back in Rutgersville. The church next to the gravesite displayed a mannequin of Jesus Christ, of which Chris took a picture. Four days later, he posted some pictures of his weight loss journey, claiming that he weighed 223 pounds and continued to lose weight. The next day, That's he good. met up with Mia Hamm again and recounted his encounter via email to a gal pal, portrayed by the troll who played the part of Kim Wilson. I have also hung out with Mia again today, treated her to a pleasant and good lunch and another good amount of conversation. We got to know each other a little better. Then after returning her to her hotel room, I gave her another little donation towards her funding and gave her the missionary. I am not- Oh wait, so Mia's the prostitute. Okay. Actually really good, a lot better than had thought before. If I'm not sure. <laughs> I'm sorry. What the fuck else is a fucking prostitute going to tell you, though, other than like, yeah, it was great. I loved it. It was my favorite in the world. You know, that's, that's you know, they're trying to get the they're trying to get the repeats. You know what I'm saying? So it kind of makes sense. And then to be like, oh, it was, it was so good. You got a nice schmeckle there. The other guy, he was terrible. It's not like you and the other guy are talking to each other. You know, that would be that would be bizarre. Okay. If I may state, you really missed out on having this bad boy that has felt tightness within a pussy that gave birth to two girls beforehand. I'd say that Holly would be loosing all of the doors off their hinges with my penetration, relatively speaking, referencing the robot chicken sketch with the woman tossing a wiener down a hallway in front of her boyfriend. Look it up on YouTube. On April 16th, Chris and Barbara appeared in court before a grand jury. Damn. Chris is a real badass, if you think about it. Chris is fucking prostitutes, going to court, beating people up, running them over their car. It's basically, I mean, like, he's a gang member at this point. Might as well... You know, he's a real, he's a real badass. He's a real cool guy. He's cooler than us. If you think about it, have you ever uh, had, a, had a, a brush with the law like that? Uh, you know, just saying, just saying he's a cool guy. They were indicted on their felony charges and their arraignment was scheduled for July 10th. Afterwards, he posted a tweet on the social media site Twitter, wherein he complained about his lengthy court appearance and wished that Michael Snyder died from stress because he needed to sleep. At around Bro, how are you? You can't say this, Chris. What is wrong with you? Oh my god. This time, Christian began visiting the Quickie forums, an offshoot of the Quickie, which focused on user discussions about him and the things he did. He registered under an assumed name, and in the comments he made, he tried to portray himself as a remorseful troll and would defend Chris's actions. His unique writing oh. style made it obvious to other forum members that it was actually Chris in disguise. Unique writing His posts style. on the forum are oh, thought yeah. to be lost. On April 25th, 
he revealed his supposed plans to go to Charlottesville's Fashion Square on the 28th to resume his sweetheart search in earnest over Facebook, hinting that he expected trolls to show up as well. On that day, he posted on Facebook again, victoriously announcing that he outsmarted the trolls because he had no intention of going to the mall, for he had been banned from entering the Fashion Square. <laughs> I <laughs> it's just funny because like his, his gotcha is that he can't actually go to the mall. <laughs> I had no intention, purpose, or ability to go to Fashion Square at all on today, the 28th. Do you want to know why? Oh, you are all so impressionable. On the 31st of March, nice. I was really having a bad day. What with the upcoming court date on the 4th of April and all. I was feeling very irritable then. I was walking the mall peacefully, but with the stress in my head. I answer a few calls from a troll or two, just to give you all a piece of my anger. Yes, yes, laugh and scoff all you want. My answers were cursory and loud, overheard. Yes, I was chased by dirt cops, but I did not receive the yellow Based slip until the 25th of April cops. that said, banned. So, I later decided to pull a prank on you all. The elaborate Facebook note, letting you all shoot yourselves in the foot more by prank calling them all and their latest manager, Mr. Wiener. His name was on the slip next to manager. Mr. Wiener. Ah, oh, dude, what a terrible name. I too scoffed at a small sausage name. All I had to do was stay at home with doors locked. Well, who says a wiener is small? I don't understand. Where'd you get that idea, Chris? The fuck? Just because it says wiener doesn't mean it's small. You weirdo. He's got his, he's too inflated now. You can't be telling him that he gives good dick when he's never had sex before. Now you're gonna make him think he's a fucking incredible person. This is terrible. This prostitute is ruined is is just ruining everything. He's like false sense of uh, accomplishment here. And let you all argue and fight it out. I read your posts and laughed and laughed at everything you thought was true or what was false. Theories and mistaken facts. You all think you know me, but you really do not. And you all just do not, and never will, understand me at all! And as long as your purpose of knowing me consists of that gossip columnist or worse, trolling, bullying, cyberbullying, abuse, or anything of malcontent, I do not want you to know me ever! In the end, you all have played right into my hands, like me overlooking the battlefield and picking up slash placing you all one by one into the bombing range center! I am a lot more intelligent, wise, and knowledgeable than your puny minds can theorize. I am not stupid, nor am I a moron. And you know what? You all have made me this way. Crazy and paranoid with loss of peace of mind. I'm watching each and every one of you fallible trolls. And rest assured, I know where- A loss of pizza mind. That's what I'm saying, brothers. What? Why am I slowed right now? What's happening? What is this? Oh, who cares? Each of you live, and I'm coming after each of you all. Yes, it was me, and those posts were real. A day later, he posted a screenshot of another member's post on the Quickie forums, and revealed that the inspiration behind his trolling persona Jenkins Jinkies' elaborate childhood backstory was inspired by a quote from the adult cartoon series, Family Guy. On May 1st, he further explained how he fooled the trolls by getting banned from the mall, and revealed that he had sex with someone he found on the back page. He closed his post by stating that he had made over 200 screen captures of the Quickie forums, intending to possibly use them as evidence in court. On evidence of what? Like... <laughs> Like, you're, it's not Michael Snyder or whatever the guy's name is. He's not the one bullying you. So what is this really going to be evidence of? Or are you going to get Megan Schroeder, right? Megan Schroeder was the one who was bullying me. Ninth, feeling lonely. Chris encouraged his Facebook friends to help him find a girlfriend by asking them to talk about him to women in Charlottesville. Kim Wilson left a reply, politely refusing to introduce Chris to random women and would continue to supposedly talk about him with her own girlfriends. Three days later, he posted the photo from 2007, which Daniel Mims and Lucas from The Game Place posted on the internet, and practically began the entire trolling campaign against him. Chris angrily declared that Mims ruined his life, and wanted his life to be ruined in return, by asking that someone kill his girlfriend. After Kim asked him what Mims' girlfriend had done to him, he reinforced his stance that Mims did not deserve to have any love in his life, because Chris had none in his. He wished the same unto Chris. Megan Schroeder, but felt like she was further outside his sphere of influence. After Anna yeah, contributed no to the conversation, stating that it was a bad idea to publicly post death threats while he was involved in an ongoing trial, Christian wrote that his previous comments were solely meant for trolls who might read them, so they would in turn treat Daniel Mims poorly. However, according to a tweet from the following day, he still wished for Mims' girlfriend to be killed. He soon conceded that she didn't have to die, and simply wanted for Mims to become emotionally distraught. Later that <laughs> That makes it so much better, guys. Day, Christian revealed on Facebook that under Barbara's wishes, they both had driven to Fredericksburg, Virginia, to pick up two beagle pups from a puppy farm. They were named Clover beagle and Snoopy, pups. and Chris shared their photos online. During the second half of May, knowing full well that Chris lurked in the quickie forums, trolls on the site decided to devise a plan of printing out and placing defamatory posters of Christian throughout Charlottesville on June 2nd. In oh my god, see this is the problem, bro. You can't troll a troll because they take it personally, they get butt hurt. And they start doing weird shit like this. <laughs> Now they feel now they feel like Chris has questioned them as men and some women probably.
And now they feel like they have to respond by going to his actual like a living place and uh, you know put up posters basically harassing him. In order to get him banned from every possible establishment and ensure that he is found guilty on all of his criminal charges. Oh my god. From May 20 Well that's a way too far. What the fuck? Like you 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 want him to get you want him to get fucking charged? That's way too far. What the fuck, dude? Sixth, some trolls allegedly began warming up for their plan by posting photoshopped images of posters put up in some select locations across Charlottesville and custom signs branding him a sexual deviant. Chris found these pictures and reposted them on Facebook and asked his friends to confirm if they were real or fake. Anna commented that they were all fake and told- Wow, it's actually surprisingly perceptive of Chris Chan to be like, are these real or fake? Because like you would have just assumed he would have thought they were all real and operated within that capacity. Not to get tricked by them so easily. She also ousted Jackie and Kim as trolls. Chris did not react Whoa. to this comment. A couple of days later, he asked that someone infiltrate the game place and see if they had any of the posters on display because he suspected that Michael Snyder may have had a part in the poster scheme. Oh my in addition, based on information he read on the forums, he requested that one of his friends go to the bar Club 216 in Charlottesville since that was an alleged meeting place for the trolls. God. On June 2nd, the so-called Tea Day, Christian woke up at around 6 a.m. and began- What is that? Tea Day? What does that mean? Began observing his immediate surroundings from his home and kept a close eye on local news, all while making numerous Twitter and Facebook posts about his concerns over the poster and flyer campaign. He asked his friends and anyone else who was reading his comments to go out and try to catch trolls in the act. According to the phony information he had read on the quickie forums, some of them would be dressed up as clowns, Ku Klux Klan members, oh or pickle men. He also feared that some of them may have come armed. At one point, he believed clowns, Ku Klux Man Klan members, or pickle men. Those are very similar things that the trolls had hired a skywriter to write a defamatory statement about him. Chris angrily scolded his friends for not responding to his pleas for help. Kim soon left a reply, informing him that she had just gotten home from work and was not able to respond to him earlier, and that she- Pop, I've been watching you since on YouTube since 200 subs. Oh, thanks. Like, 200 YouTube subs? Uh, cool. Thanks, man. I don't even remember that time. He also thanks, drew brother. a blank and couldn't think of a thing to say. Anna left a more detailed reply. Here is my reason for not saying anything. I know that it's all fake, and that you've fallen for it once again. Nobody's out there posting signs or protesting or anything, but if I say that, you won't believe me. And you have 11 friends on Facebook, many of whom do not even live in the Charlottesville area and so could not check on things for you, and the rest may not have been on Facebook yet today, and those that have might not be subscribed to you, so they may not have seen your posts. Chris retorted. I'm probably- Oh, that's not nice. And I also, it's not retorted, it's retarded. I'm just kidding. That's, that's a joke. That's a joke. Sorry, guys. Don't say that word. Idiot for asking at a time like this. How do you know? Do you have some intel of your own? Did you know a detail I did not? Please explain, Anna. Anna wrote back. You're not an idiot. I know because people are still messaging me on Facebook telling me so. People who are still your fans. And because it's extremely obvious to me that the pictures of the posters hung up in places are fake. I've gotten very good at spotting the difference between real and fake over the years. And by using logic, it's easy to see that nobody's going to spend money on a plane ticket, slash gas, slash hotel room, slash taking off work just to come torment you for a day. I disagree. I disagree with that. There there was already somebody who did that. I mean, this person isn't obviously isn't like super involved in the depth of the Christian lore. Of course, they're a what would we consider a plebeian. But like, yeah, somebody they have already done that. People have already met up with him and put themselves in like a pickle costume and like trolled him. Like it's a whole thing. Two days later, Christian published a Facebook note announcing that he had apparently informed the authorities about the flyer and poster ploy against him. He then lashed out at the trolls for lying about the poster campaign ever taking place and revealed that he was reading the quickie forms using the account Trombonista. On that same day, Chris wrote an email to his online gal pal, sharing his doubts about his future. I am so tired from stress, it is harder for me to maintain focus in thought. I feel like I just want to go ahead and die naturally, unless the stress kills me first, and I'm not going to commit suicide of any sort. At least I don't have to worry about dying a virgin. I feel like my dream of starting up a family with my future sweetheart and having our crystal daughter is not going to be realized or come true. We do get out. Well, those are the same thing, Chris. Being, something not being realized and not coming true are quite literally the exact same thing. It was just for June 2nd that I had to stay at home to remove me from any suspicion by the damn jerk ups. We have no respect for the local police. I slept most of the day away after staying awake for a long while worrying. I crashed at about 8 a.m. My only great purpose now is for my mother, our two cats, and our two puppies. No girlfriend slash sweetheart as freaking promised from multiple dreams for Christian Weston Chandler. Only hatred, fear, discrimination, and a whole wide world of extreme, unjustifiable shit lies in the wake of my once good name. Nobody really truly understands shit. me. I am sad, confused, lost. I do not understand. Stay safe with peace. Christian W. Chandler. Sent from my iPod. On June 8th, 
Chris expressed his loneliness after witnessing a young man nibbling at his girlfriend's ear. He said that he felt oh like God. a supervillain because he wanted to make the boyfriend as well as all males between the ages of 21 and 50 disappear. But Why just them? Does he feel like a 51-year-old isn't going to be able to pose a threat to him from like a sexually competitive standard? Because I feel like there's a lot of people, no offense, that would choose a 51-year-old over Christian. I'm just saying, okay? Sending them to a different dimension. God. Two days later, he set up his lemonade stand to support the Alex Lemonade Stand Foundation. His original plans were to host it outside his home and have it on for three days. But instead, he decided to move it to his church and run it for only one afternoon. After it was finished, he wrote okay. that he raised $50 for the cause. On June 14th, he complained- did he, did he keep the money? You know, like, did he actually give the money out, you think? I don't know. ...about a McDonald's employee who got angry with him for swearing and posted her photo on Facebook. Oh my god. On the 20th- Wait, so he's like, <laughs> he posted a photo of this girl? Bro, Chris, you, you're not helping yourself. I don't think that would be considered doxing, but Jesus Christ, Chris. The 7th, Chris had an explosive outburst on Facebook, ordering all of his trolls and cyberbullies to quit hating him, discriminating against him, wanting him dead, photographing and photoshopping him, among other demands. Anna suggested that he could solve the problem by withdrawing strong. himself from the internet and changing his phone number. He claimed that he couldn't change his number because it was linked to too many things and contacts. Plus, it was on his business cards, True. which also listed a QR code connected to his Nintendo 3DS. On that same day... Why does he have a what does he have a business card for? Why does he have a business card? What am I missing here? He complained about a woman at McDonald's who allegedly discriminated against him. He took a picture of her and shared it on Facebook, asking his friends and followers to throw a newspaper in her face. What the fuck? On June 28th, Chris <laughs> expressed his so diminishing will to- Bro, it really- dude, he's like going off the deep end. He's- he, it, it's really gone quite far. Holy shit. To ...live from having a dead soul. He wrote that he had taken his Transformers Megatron pistol and shot himself in the head to symbolize how internally dead he felt. Okay. The next day. Oh, is Sonic Chew business card? Yeah, I mean, it makes sense, I guess, but... He wrote a lengthy post about his loneliness and hatred for the trolls, and also passively mentioned that he had recently been banned from two McDonald's establishments. Damn, two? I've been encountering people who started hating me in reference to the recent... How the fuck do you get banned from McDonald's, bro? What the fuck are you doing? Banned from those two McDonald's. That now makes five places I have been and am banned from around here. Counting Fashion Square. Ooh, Damn, baby. that man jerk. Piedmont, Virginia Community College. Damn, Mary Lee Walsh. And the place. Children fucking damned, Michael Snyder. I seriously have been publicly invisible for years. The damn trolling stupids have manipulated me, smeared my once good name through the worst mud, muck, and bodily fluids, mentally and emotionally raped me continuously, made the worst imaginable reputation of me on the internet, and Jesus. relate that onto offline life in gossip, rumors, and presidentially grand fucked up campaigns. My mind is comparably as worse off as a terribly bad drug addict, constantly blank. Irritable, Maybe. untalkative, ignorant to most social cues, lost in life, yada yada yada. Except I do not do any of those drugs or smoke, and I just do not understand most people and a lot of shit in life. It was possibly around this time that Chris wrote a brief Facebook post praying that someone plant a bomb in the game place and have it destroyed, along with Michael Snyder. Jesus, bro. He's really not helping himself with this shit. Like, wh why would- if I was a court, I mean, that's a- that's a threat. What were you- what are you doing? Oh my god. This is insane, bro. This is insane. He quickly deleted these comments. Well, On the I final day of good, June, he asked for his Facebook friends to help him with a power outage caused by a tree that had fallen on the power lines. On July 1st, the tree was removed and power was restored to Chris's house and his neighborhood. On July 10th, Quickie 4 users, Cyan and Indigo, attended Christian and Barbara's arraignment at Charlottesville's circuit court, and later oh gave God. their own accounts of what had happened on the forums. Yeah, uh, okay. So people, th just like that person said, like, nobody's gonna show up, bro. They are literally showing up. What are you talking about? Oh my God, how obsessive. Gotta get the, gotta be, I wonder if anybody who covered Christian has become like a, like a person. Like, has become like a journalist, you know what I mean? Like, somebody that's, that's mentioned, you know what I'm saying? Barbara was the first to go. When the judge began asking the usual questions, such as, do you fully understand the charges you face? Barbara asked if she could have Belle answer for her. The judge wasn't very patient Who's Belle? with her, and Barbara seemingly attempted to protest. Barbara simply answered yes to all of his standard questions, pleaded guilty, and sat back down. What? She pled guilty? Then what was the point of getting the lawyer? Barbara looked as though she had lost significant weight, and another older woman was with them. It's been confirmed that she's Rocky. Meanwhile, Chris okay. was busy completely disassociating himself from the situation. 
He fiddled around with his sunglasses, making a few noises when they collided with the table every now and then, played with his ring, and didn't seem like he was paying much attention to dialogue he probably ought to be listening to. The yeah, I'll, I'll get a Dunkin' Donuts tea. That sounds good, baby love. The Cushion got to have a speech before it was Christian's turn to take the stand. I can't- Maybe an egg sandwich. Are you already coming home? It's only five- It's only six o'clock. Remember everything they said, but the important parts were that Snyder didn't want Chris and Barb to be stuck with a felony charge, and that he hoped that the plea bargain would be accepted by the judge. What's the plea bargain? Bell took a turn to speak. He surprisingly introduced Chris as high-functionally autistic, which is an outdated term and not part of the autism spectrum. At one point, he called Chris an adult autistic child. This drew a notable reaction out of Chris. He went so far he called him an adult autistic child as to change his facial expression from severe pouting to as close to outrage as he dared show. He nearly interrupted his lawyer, but must have thought better of it and quieted whatever he was going to say into an intelligible mumble. He also made note that if the plea bargain was accepted, Chris would be assimilated into the world, taught how to contribute to society, and would get psychiatric evaluations and treatment. Chris mumbled something and seemed really distressed by all of this. When Chris was brought to the stand, he stressed sighed first thing. He then repeated his mother's earlier question in hopes to get Bell to speak for him. The judge shot him down the same way he did his mother and proceeded to ask the questions. This is where the things got amusing. Do you understand that you're to be charged the- Amusing? What is this? So basically what's happening here is that if this was recorded and put up, that Christian would have also created the Johnny Depp Amber Heard situation. Because he is, I think, Amber Heard, I guess. I don't know. But, you know, he invented that as well. He's inventing things all over the place. The court fees, should you accept the plea bargain? Yes, my mother will be taking care of that. Do you understand that you are to pay Michael John Snyder for his medical expenses? Yes, but I don't think that thieving liar deserves a red cent. Oh yes, folks, I kid you not. Our beloved mayor of Quickville committed public slander in a court of law. I expected a harsh reprimand for such egregiously bad behavior, or perhaps even for his plea bargain to be denied. But alas, the judge pretty much let it go and continued on. Welp. Another free pass for Chris, brought to you by the autism card. And fine. Well, I mean, I understand what you're saying, but like also he has autism, so it makes his day to day functions much worse. Much worse. Um, uh, I don't know. Bring me a tea, babe. Maybe we can go to the diner for dinner or something. Anyway, it's like one of those things where there's a there's a fine line, really, between getting a pass for something and having something as like an excuse for something like a reasonable excuse, right? So like if I have irritable bowel, irritable bowel, bowel syndrome and I shit myself, you, you wouldn't, I, and I would be like, yeah, sorry, I shit myself. You would be like, oh, oh, oh there's the guy with IBS, shit himself. It's like, well, that's not really, using the using the IBS card, it's like, yeah, I have, I'm going to shit myself. Now, if I went and I just started shitting on a wall and I could have like held it or went to the bathroom, but I was just trying to be facetious. <laughs> Funny word. Then, that's not playing, that's not, that. and then somebody was like, oh, well, he has IBS. That would be playing the IBS card, right? Because I could have held myself, right? So, like, yeah, him having a bit of an outburst isn't necessarily using a, a card or, you know, using the I have autism, you know, card. It might just be, like, an outburst that he's just, like, frustrated and went with, you know? Finally, when asked if he willingly pleaded guilty and was his own conscious choice, Chris hesitated for a good five seconds. Yes. Barbara Chandler and Christian Chandler were both found guilty of fail to stop at the scene of an accident, and Barbara was charged with assault on an officer. Barbara was sentenced with community service and two years of probation, and Chris was sentenced with community service, one year of probation, and must comply with all psychiatric treatment and evaluation. If you feel Okay, so the thing here is, is that they wasted money on a lawyer, it sounds like, honestly. They probably could have just had a public defender, because it sounds like Michael Schneider didn't really want him to get nay-nayed. <laughs> For lack of a better term, you know? Um, it sounds more like he was pretty—he was being pretty empathetic. Fails so. to do so, he faces jail time. Cyan provided his readers with his depiction of Chris in court. The next day, Chris went to Facebook to write that he knew that Cyan and Indigo were present in the courtroom, and that his lawyer, Rob Bell, confronted them. He then clarified that he did not call Snyder thieving and lying, but rather bribing and lying. As his frequent court appearances subsided, Christian showed no sign of stopping to express his hatred against the owner of the game place, or his burning desire to escape his current real-life situation. Oh. For him, the social media site Facebook offered an easy way to voice his innermost thoughts to his friends and foes, and continued to do so, Shit. because despite what he had been told, he felt that his constant monologuing and reaching out to others offered him an avenue to some of his most sought-after things. Love. 
and validation. Wow. Um, okay. Well, that was certainly an interesting episode. Um, I mean, I don't really know what to say, except, uh, bro, I don't even know what to say. We're really going down like a hell of a path at this point. Um, like we're really going down like one hell of a path here. Uh, oh, uh, the, the episode really turned once he decided to identify as like a femboy or whatever. Tob girl? Tob boy? Tob, Tob and Jerry? I don't know. You know what I'm saying? The episode really took like a sharp turn at that point. Really bizarre though. Jesus Christ. Thank you so much for watching guys and another special shout out to all my Patreon and Twitch subs. If you'd like to support this channel further than you already have by just watching the video alone, go down to the links below where you can sub on my Patreon which will allow you to get your name on this beautiful black wall. <laughs> uh, or you can go to the Twitch page and you can actually use a free Amazon Prime sub if you have Amazon Prime to subscribe. Thank you very much guys. Take care.